Let's see. I'm not trying to be... How do I say this? We're an amazing company to work for. <laughs> okay, just get that out. We work really hard at trying to be a place that it's worth spending a fraction of your life at. That matters to me. That matters deeply to all of us here. It's a big deal if somebody walks through and says, I want to work here. Really? Do you? Do you really want to be here with us? Bleeding, sweating, crying, trying to make this place work. And that's what that interview process is about. Let's help you figure out what you want. And by the way, that's what all of your days here are about, is us helping the staff understand what it is that they actually deeply, truly want. And our goal, our, our charge, if you will, is to help them discover that and help them get it. And even if we wreck this company 68 and a half years in the making, we wreck it doing that. Okay. Like I've always hoped to have the courage to wreck the company doing what we believed was right. We got these 100 employees. This restaurant is a story of their lives and their becoming. I got a lot of thoughts on why that is, but we can go there later if you want. Oh, no, I actually want to follow up. Why do you care so much about what an employee wants? Oh, right. Um, yeah, why does that question really get under my skin? The idea that discovering what your employee wants might be the most precious, most valuable thing you can do as a business owner um, yeah, so let's just pretend like that isn't obvious. Let's start from scratch. Three lamb, four sea ring, ribeye, two forest over. Sure. Right now we're going to the Providence Hospital. Sure. You're interviewing to work here, and I like you. I mean, I just, I, every bone in my body just says like, hey, this is going to be awesome. But you get this feeling of like, hey, I think I'm nailing the interview. This place is not for me, right? Maybe I know that to be true about you because I've now asked you a question about your goals and where you're going in life. And I can kind of see that what your answers are leading me to is something different than Canlis, but I know you'd be good here. So I just put on my best face and I just convince you like, hey, I'm Mark Canlis and you got to work here. This is for you. I'm convincing you something that may not be right for you because it's good for me. In fact, we'll just cover this place in benefits and make it as sweet as we can. But do you see what's happening at the onset of this relationship? We're fooling one another. We're coming into it in the most selfish way we can, which is I don't really care about you. I'm just going to do what's good for me. And that, unfortunately, is the premise upon which a lot of hiring in our country is based upon. So when we're interviewing, that's the sole operative question. How will working here help you become who you're hoping to become? Not what, but who. And if you can convince me that working here is going to help you become who you're hoping to become, those pieces of your character that you feel you've been created to live into, cool. This is going to be amazing. I don't care if you've never worked in a restaurant before. It's going to work. And if not, it's not the right spot for you. Mark speaks sometimes, it's kind of vague, and you're like, what are you saying? My name is Aaron Reed, I worked at Canlis from 2012 to the beginning part of 2018. When I got here, I was terrified. Um, I realized very quickly how intimidating this place can be. It's one of the best restaurants uh, in the country. He'd come home with all these stories of, like, his failures and 
the culture, and I think about a month in, he started to feel like he might make it here. And uh, he said to me, you know, they're hiring hostesses. I was a little bit against working here. I grew up rurally, one of seven children, in a single-wide, not double-wide, mobile home out in the woods, opposite of this. I said, I don't know if I ethically agree with the concept of fine dining. People just go there and they throw their money at this place. I hadn't really ever experienced fine dining, but that was my conception of it. But Aaron disagreed with me. He was like, you know, this place seems different. So I started here, I think five weeks after Aaron. It's really hard when you start here because it's so intense. Feels like you're holding onto an electric fence. The standards are really high. And there's so much chaos. And for me personally, it shut me down. Eventually, Mark Canlis sat me down and said, listen, like, we can't see you. Like, I don't know if it's like, you don't know the food well enough. And I knew my stuff, I studied, but it was still like, Aaron, I'm not, I'm not seeing who you, I'm not seeing you at the table. I thought, it's like, man, who am I? I don't, I don't know if I have a really good grasp of that. Once they started asking that, it wasn't a quick fix. It's not like, oh yeah, that's, that's who I am. It, it took a while um, and it took pressing in and, and I felt, especially from the ownership, that they were really interested in seeing who I was. And so I, I began a long, a long journey to figuring that out. The staff will never follow you if you don't allow yourself to be seen. And how can I say that to him? Because I know that's true about me. And so if I can be uh, courageous enough to be seen uh, for who I actually am, um, then maybe they, they will too. And maybe even, maybe this working hypothesis is that in so doing, the company would flourish. And that's the magic. If you can get 100 employees flourishing, your company's gonna do just fine. There's this tension of people who are warm and emotional and asking questions about faith and what it means to trust a human being. And then there are the people who are like, this glass should be the way it should be, should be polished the way that it should be polished. And we help each other. People have helped me be a much more vulnerable person on the floor, a much kinder, more open and generous person. And at the same time, I have helped those same people mise the table correctly. It's that mix of technicality versus emotional um, vulnerability and emotional maturity that drives the success of our dining room. The two go hand in hand, and and, uh, and Canlas is very much a mix of both of those. These people, um, they're not just people of exceptional character. In so many ways, they're geniuses. In so many ways, they're the best of who's out there at what they do. And you know what we don't say often enough? You can't suck, um, and you gotta kick some ass, and you gotta be awesome. But that doesn't impress me. What impresses me is that you can do that while loving the person next to you. You can do that while focused on the man or woman that you yourself are becoming. That's impressive. Every time. Like, that's what inspires me. I love that about this place. I forgot to say that earlier. I do feel differently about fine dining now. It is an amazing opportunity for people to experience being truly cared for. And the way that we care for people here, it feels like the gospel fleshed out. Looking back on it, I'm really grateful for the restaurant. I feel more like Aaron than I felt like when when I stepped through the doors the first time. It's not my job to change them. That's the Spirit's work. Our work is to be living lives that would pique their curiosity around change. You open the door for the Holy Spirit to move through. It's the operative conversation. Who are you becoming? How have you changed because you've worked here?